Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys a quick update on my experience with the Sony Xperia Tablet Z. Now for those of you who missed my unboxing, let me catch you up. We're looking at the 32GB version of this uh, tablet. You can pick it up also in a 16GB capacity. They're priced at five and six hundred dollars respectively. They both have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. You're looking at a 1920 by 1200 resolution 10.1 inch display which Sony is brandishing as the best uh, tablet display on the market and for good reason. Thus far I've been really really impressed with what I've seen out of it and Sony also has incorporated their Bravia mobile engine uh, so that's another thing that they are touting in terms of uh, the entire uh, visual experience you're getting being an arm or a branch from their television uh, enterprise, which makes sense. This is Sony. They're a very large dim uh, digital imaging company, so it's kind of a no-brainer. So a great display. What's under the hood for that five and six hundred dollars? Well, uh, you are getting a Snapdragon S4 quad-core processor, two gigs of RAM, uh, near-field communication is there. For those of you looking for NFC, it's present, and it should be. It's pretty much standard fare these days. Uh, you also have Bluetooth 4.0. You've got a micro USB port uh, located right down in the bottom left corner there, uh, which I'll be showing you guys a little bit later. And that's actually how the tablet charges, uh, which is a good thing. We've got a standard format charger, something Sony's been doing uh, through the course of uh, last year and this year, kind of switching everything over to uh, micro USB and finally uh, making a lot of you happy out there who don't want to have to carry a hundred different plugs. So that's definitely in its favor. Beyond that, we've got a front facing two megapixel camera right up there in the dead center of the frame at the top and on the rear an eight megapixel camera. And that's another thing I'll be highlighting through the course of this update because as I mentioned in my unboxing, Sony really does market this tablet as the best of their company, and that's because they've really tried to incorporate all of their brands. As I mentioned before, uh, the display incorporating Bravia. Uh, when you deal with the camera uh, app on here, it now incorporates things you would find in the Cybershot family as well as, well, I should say across the entire Sony uh, lineup of cameras. So that's another new element, and again, uh, features or highlights the fact that Sony is incorporating every part of its business into this tablet. Uh, so I'll be showing you guys some of those things. Uh, other things to uh, note, we've got water resistance here, which is pretty huge. And Sony kind of screwed this up on the last go round with the Xperia uh, Tablet S. And they definitely, in my opinion, as a result, had to make it right this time around. Now, that's not to say that the Tablet S was a, a complete flop. I did really happen to like that tablet a lot. In fact, I still own one, as you guys can see right here, uh, but it was pulled off the market, and that was because there was an issue with uh, the seal at the very bottom of the tablet, which compromised it. Uh, so as a result, uh, I'm not saying that Sony necessarily learned its lesson, but they certainly had a bit of a debacle there, and I think as a result, they made sure to get it right on this version. Now, I have not actually tested uh, you know, any kind of water contact with this yet, but maybe that's something I'll do in the future. For now, I want to focus on just telling you guys what to really expect out of this tablet. Uh, so I've pretty much gone over specifications. You guys know it's got two gigs of RAM, so everything's in line with uh, standard fare for the $500 uh, and up price point, which I still think is too pricey, but it seems it's going to remain standard, so we'll put that aside. You've got GPS, of course, and as I mentioned, the latest software, this is not a Nexus device. You're not going to be, uh, or at least I should tell you right now, if you want to root your device, if you want to run custom ROMs, Sony is not the brand for you. Uh, some manufacturers are open to, uh, you know, rooting and unlocking devices. Sony just isn't one of them. So if that's what you're coming into this experience looking for, even if it's your first Android tablet, do know in advance this isn't going to give you that experience. What Sony's trying to accomplish here is a finished product out of the box, and they've tried to do that in the past, as many manufacturers do, although they bring all of their marketing to the tablet because they do have a lot of multimedia rights. I mean, uh, the Walkman brand, as you can see, is incorporated. Their own movie service uh, is there. Their own music service is there. So even though Android does lean, obviously, on Google's Play Store for all of its content, uh, and, and I think most users do default to that, uh, Sony's asking you to use their marketplaces because they own a lot of media. So it makes sense, um, but beyond that, 
You've got an infrared remote control here, which Sony did have in the last generation, that uh, other tablet I just showed you, the Xperia S, which was driven by the Tegra 3. And that's another thing I want to point out about this tablet. Uh, Sony's early to the dance here. You know, the uh, Xperia Tablet S launched in September. Now we're getting a product in May, even though it's a little bit delayed. And uh, more, I would say, not about a delay, but just inventory not being able to keep up with demand. I have to respect the fact that they realized you've got to get out into the marketplace substantially earlier. Uh, one direction we did take a hit, though, with them getting this product out earlier is that you do have uh, a quad-core chip in there, which is serviceable and certainly right up there on par uh, with the top-tier processors now. But once the Tegra 4 drops, uh, which is any day now, we're going to start seeing it in tablets across the board, uh, the new Transformer, among many others, uh, Toshiba's tablets, I think that's when this tablet is going to start to go on sale. And if it doesn't, people might be leaning towards those other tablets for performance. But in my opinion, when you pick a tablet, it really should be about the entire experience. Uh, you shouldn't be basing it solely on uh, you know, the chip that's driving the experience, even though, of course, that's critical. I think everything since last year's uh, generation of tablets really has performed well enough that you're not going to find a dog anymore. That's just my opinion, even when you hear that this isn't the latest and greatest chip. So while the uh, quad-core chip in here really is quite close to what I'd find in, let's say, my Galaxy Note 2, because I've benchmarked these already uh, against each other, including the older uh, Xperia Tablet S, just to see where things are at. And basically, you're looking at a 20,000 overall benchmark uh, with the Xperia Tablet S, and I know, uh, or Z, excuse me, and I know that there are a lot of different benchmarks that you could use out there, but I'm just giving you a rough, whereas the older uh, S model is yielding a little over 12,000. My Galaxy Note 2 ranges anywhere from 18 to 20,000. So whether you know what I'm talking about or not, just know higher the number is better, or the higher number, I mean, is better. And uh, this is right up there with the top on performance of all current devices. Now, is that going to change over the next three to six months? Absolutely. So, I mean, that's something to keep in mind. But again, uh, I want to focus on the overall experience. And I keep saying that because the screen is amazing. Uh, the water resistance is a great feature, even though I have not directly tested it. You can actually submerge this thing for 30 minutes in up to three feet of water. And it at least supposedly will survive, which is really impressive, which eventually translates to meaning that this tablet is a go-anywhere device. And that's something that really you wouldn't expect out of the thinnest and lightest 10.1-inch tablet ever made. And it also says a lot coming from the older design. The Xperia Tablet S that I just uh, was showing you guys a moment ago is a 9.4-inch display. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't say substantially smaller, but 10.1 definitely is preferable in my opinion. The biggest problem with 10.1-inch tablets has always been their weight, and that's something Sony has eliminated. This is lighter than the Xperia Tablet S, which, as I just mentioned, smaller screen. So we've gone to a larger screen but a lighter build. Uh, and part of that has come at the expense, though, of build quality. And I'm not knocking the build quality of this tablet, but it does not have that metal construction that you will find uh, with the good old uh, Xperia Tablet S. So you see that metal. Uh, the, the flip book cover design also was abandoned. Some of you will be happy about that. This is really just a wafer or slate design, very clean. Still, you do have rounded edges, so nothing's going to you know, feel sharp in the hand. Very comfortable to use, and that's really my biggest uh, compliment to this tablet. Uh, above and beyond its hardware, which is fantastic, it's that weight, because no one else approaches that one pound mark like they do. It's, I, I believe, 1.09, and you're a hair over... Uh, a quarter of an inch thick. I mean, this thing is ridiculous. And uh, sound quality so far has been very good. Now, they, it does have 3D sound. In other words, there are four speakers, two on the side, two on the bottom. And really, what that amounts to, uh, I mentioned to one user in a comment that I'm not sure if I like it or not. That might be my biggest critique of the tablet at this point. Well, that still uh, stands to be determined. Really, right now, watching general content, uh, anything that's not a movie, that has any type of special or, uh, you know, rated audio, but I'm talking about stereo sources here, obviously, you're just going to get a louder experience. It's going to try to create depth where there may not be any. However, when you are watching a movie where, uh, you know, the player actually is able to decode things, I've noticed that in scenes it has properly uh, been able to leverage that depth of audio for the actual scene. So that's been impressive. Uh, I'm not sure if that's 
uh, isolated um, to a specific player here because I've seen it across a couple already. Uh, but I'll give you guys more feedback as I spend more time. That's just an initial uh, thing that I've noticed, wanted to point out. Also, I like that Sony's kept pretty much the exact same software layout that you'll find on the 4.11 version on the Xperia Tablet S because really there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, despite, I think, a lot of your fears about bloatware on Sony's tablets, they've really kept it pretty light considering it's Sony after all. I mentioned all the music and video services, all, you know, crackles on there. There's some things, but nothing too crazy. Uh, again, this is the 32 gig version. You're looking at 25 gigs uh, available on the 16 gig version. You'll only be getting uh, around eight to nine. So keep that in mind, even though you do have that micro SD card slot for storage expansion. And I'm pretty sure that uh, this device is compliant with uh, MHL uh, video out through the micro USB, but that's something to be tested down the road. I still haven't seen um, any information regarding that. Uh, but once I verify it, I'll be sure to test it and give you guys feedback. So without further ado, let me start taking you through some things with the tablet. I know I've given you guys a lot of info, but I felt it necessary because after all, it's not often, as I mentioned in my unboxing, that I get a tablet that is really exciting. And this is because the weight, the form factor, the brilliance of the screen, the overall experience because of the software and hardware all end up making this really the best tablet on the market right now. But it does cost quite a bit and that's because it is Sony and it is the latest and greatest. So with that said, let's jump right to web browsing. I'm going to start there and give you guys an example. I'm going to go up and go in, uh, load up in Gadget, which uh, is graphic heavy, even though they've lightened it up. And we are running uh, over my uh, uh, dual band router. So this is, we are going over five uh, gigahertz. This is not 2.4 right now, just to let those of you who are interested know. Uh, I actually might get a better reach out of uh, the 2.4. accidentally got picked up Google now there. Let's see if I can back out. Um, but essentially, you are looking at a really stable environment, very smooth. Everything works really well, at least in my experience. Uh, pinch to zoom, not picking up right there, of course. Um, but overall, I do like what I'm seeing out of this. Oh, that's because of Engadget's website. I should have known better. Uh, but I will take you guys somewhere else where you will get a working example. But everything is smooth, as I mentioned. Everything loads up relatively fast. You can see almost instantaneous there. Again, in Gadget, very light, actually, rather than graphic intensive like it used to be. Uh, but let me take you somewhere else. Let's go over to CNN because that will not be light. And Chrome does a, a pretty nice job handling just about everything I've thrown at it on this tablet. You know, sometimes it's a bit of hit or miss depending on the build and how well uh, things run or have been optimized in general because, as we know, outside of Nexus devices, your experience really is framed by the manufacturer. But you can see things are smooth here. Pinch to zoom, as I just mentioned, that was an Engadget thing, not a Chrome or Sony thing. And everything's really, really smooth. Again, resolution, fantastic. Do you need the extra resolution? Well, that's really a matter of your own eyes. I think you've got to spend time uh, with tablets of different resolutions and see if you really notice the difference. Uh, I think most people will notice it, but I think half of you out there justifiably would not pick these, you know, the latest generation that are pushing the boundaries uh, on the Pixel Wars just for the marketing, uh, especially when you can save yourself some money, unless you really do notice that difference. If you notice it, then you're going to absolutely want uh, a higher res tablet. Now, I do appreciate, as I mentioned, that Sony didn't go uh, above uh, the resolution that they did here because, quite frankly, most of Android is still optimized to uh, the 720p standard. So to really go up uh, above and beyond 1080p, which, of course, the Nexus 10 did, and it's a nice tablet, don't misunderstand anything I'm saying here, it still just isn't optimized uh, for where things are at in the development of the OS. So uh, that's something to respect and understand. Uh, but it works really well nonetheless uh, overall, and that's why I like this. Also, again, the colors just pop, look great, and we don't have a Super AMOLED here, uh, which Sony likes to emphasize. Uh, I don't think we're that far off, though, from their next generation employing Super AMOLEDs of some sort uh, when it does become uh, cost uh, conscious. But for now, we're going with this uh, newly touted, they've got all sorts of marketing names for it, but I'm just going to stick to that we're looking at a non-IPS, uh, you know, 1920 by 1200p 
resolution display that incorporates their Bravia tech, which you're going to see when I get into the menus. Uh, let me go ahead and take you... Oh, I'm going to jump out. Well, no, I'll give you one more website. Let's go to ESPN as well. These are always the standard things I throw at you guys because, after all, they're all popular sites. ESPN also giving uh, their mobile version. Let me go ahead and... Oh, my got scores uh, accidentally jumping into a game cast. But you can see it's handling everything really well. And really that's the main difference between this and uh, last generation of tablets. Uh, they all stand up really well. Tegra 3 based devices are performers. Uh, I think they really were the beginning of blurring the line. But now when you work with uh, devices like this, uh, the throughput is just at another level overall. So that doesn't mean that the the older generation is bad. It's just you can tell when you've used them both. If you haven't used either, then I think you're going to be hard pressed uh, to find disappointment with any of the top tier tablets from last year. But when you know what they operate like and then move to something like this, uh, you're going to notice the difference on every uh, point. So uh, overall, again, really solid. Like what I see here. I'm going to give you guys an example of uh, video now. So as I mentioned before, actually I'll show you the camera, why not? Let's go left to right here. So, of course right now that's the back end camera and it's focusing on my background, even picking up some of the chips in the paint there. But what I want to focus on is, you may notice right here, uh, it's got that, um, excuse that alarm, one of my devices going off here. You'll notice that it has that uh, right there in the upper left, the auto, uh, the superior auto mode, which is directly taken from Sony's CyberShot cameras. And that's interesting because, as I mentioned before, this is uh, Sony's attempt to embody the, the entire corporation, every different successful division, specifically I want to point out, and bring it into this tablet. So you now have superior auto on the last generation, uh, the Xperia Tablet S, which was just crying over there because its battery is about to die. And don't worry, I'll get to battery life as well. You do not have those extensive, uh, and when I say extensive, it's not tremendous. In part, it is marketing, no question about it. But the superior auto mode actually works. So for those of you who want to take pictures with a tablet, this is a step in the right direction. This is the first tablet I've seen uh, that actually can determine what scene it needs to adapt to for the average user who is not going to make any changes and wants to shoot in a superior auto mode constantly. So that's pretty big. And I'm not saying that the image quality is unbelievable because it's not. It's still cell phone uh, quality, even though it's using that uh, Exmor uh, processor, uh, excuse me, uh, sensor. Uh, but the whole idea is that we are leaning on Sony's CyberShot and camera development uh, technology here. And it works well, better than any other tablet when it comes to taking pictures. So I'm going to tell you guys that right now. Uh, the Superior Auto is not a gimmick here. It does actually work. Of course, you can also just draw into a number of, of scenes as well. And most of them uh, do draw or, or lend themselves from uh, Sony's CyberShot lineup of cameras, as it should. That's the idea. So in previous generations, that just was absent. So Sony realized, why not? bring the CyberShot brand into the tablet, and they did it. And I think it is successful. Uh, again, I'm not very big on using cameras on tablets, but this certainly would leave me uh, with more uh, of an inclination to do so, uh, since uh, it's familiar as a Sony user, and uh, furthermore, it is functional. In terms of their Walkman, well, that's just branding here, folks. Nothing uh, really unique, but tied into their you know, service for getting music. It makes sense. If you were Sony, you would definitely throw the Walkman brand in there. Uh, it works. I'm not going to play any music because I will show you guys audio performance in another moment uh, with an actual movie. The picture album, this existed on their previous tablets as well. Uh, very simple and straightforward. You have access to internal storage. Uh, as well as if you pop in a micro SD card. Great tablet, by the way, for a photographer, as was the uh, previous generation. I did prefer the full-size SD card slot, but micro is still pretty, pretty good. Now, in terms of actual uh, performance here with what we're looking at, if you want to just take a look at photos, you, just, you can see how they pop on the screen. And if you have your photos geotagged, uh, which Play Memories, Sony's application for dealing with all things photo and video, especially if it's uh, sourced from a Sony uh, camera, often will incorporate that data and then give you a visual for it. But you can see the images here obviously optimized to really show you 
uh, the contrast, brightness, color saturation, everything that this brand new display has to offer. And I have to say that part of what makes this display brilliant is again that footprint. You have to wonder how Sony got all of this into this form factor and then made it water resistant to boot. And I still haven't really focused on the infrared remote control, which is just an amazing feature, which was great in the last generation. And it's not something I'm going to focus on today because it is an ancillary, but certainly does uh, in many ways define this remote, um, I was going to call it a remote, this tablet and the brand that it exudes because it is a master of all rather uh, than many of its, uh, you know, uh, comparison products out there who try to do everything and end up failing, this tablet seems to be the master of all here. And uh, I say that because it just, it continues to deliver. I've seen very few hiccups. Again, haven't spent a tremendous amount of time, but as I do, you guys are gonna find out more. Let me uh, play a video for you real quick. This is the included video Sony has to show off both audio and video. And you get all those fabulous fingerprints, which by the way, I'll tell you guys right now, this tablet is no exception. Fingerprint magnet, uh, despite Sony's claim that they've um, made the screen uh, less reflective, I can't confirm that. It's still got plenty of glare. So despite uh, at least what they had hoped, um, I think what they were really aiming for was just to let the public know that this is usable outdoors because after all, that water resistance, as I mentioned earlier, equates to a go everywhere tablet. So that it can do. Uh, the screen brightness is there, uh, the screen quality overall is going to resolve outside. It's not going to be a stunner, but no tablets outdoors really are. So Sony was trying to make this usable outdoors. They accomplished that uh, as far as going beyond that. Um, uh, you know, it's just a great performer. That's where I'll leave it. Um, in terms of, uh, let's jump out. Well, I'll show you also in the My Albums, that's where it's going to direct you to your Play Memories. If you've linked that up, Facebook, Picasa, your internal memory, as I was just showing you guys before, I talked about geotagging. It'll show you in Maps. Uh, this is all part of the Sony tie-in. So if you buy into the uh, Sony infrastructure then you're, or ecosystem, then you're going to uh, be happy with what this uh, offer of the software preload uh, will give you because it really does tie everything together quite neatly. Now in terms of movies, this is where it's just pulling from your own personal onboard as well as if you're going to use Sony services and your wireless or home network I should say or whatever network you're on for that matter. As you can see the link uh, right there to uh, Video Unlimited. Uh, TV shows comes up listed, the onboard movies from internal storage. I just showed you guys the Xperia HD landscapes, which uh, is not a new title to my knowledge, but again, it really did show off the pop on this screen. Uh, and, and then devices, any other thing that basically, you know, DLNA, anything that's Wi-Fi capable that can share content, this baby will link up with and do its thing. Uh, moving along to uh, Sony Select, I'm not going to really get into because that's where uh, I do feel that's a bit of bloat, but let's go into the app drawer. I haven't really added a lot on here. Uh, as you can see through Facebook on, not that that's a test of any sort, but uh, I like to make sure that the normal things we expect to function are going to actually work as expected. Uh, but um, Maps was not preloaded, surprisingly, uh, despite the fact that this does have GPS on board. I'm not sure why, um, uh, but overall, you guys can see not a lot of bloat here. I mean, that's pretty much it. I threw on a benchmarking piece of software, and yeah, that's that's it. You've got Xperia Link is there. I mean, that's useful if you've got, uh, you know, the use for it, obviously. Um, but Crackle was there. What, did I miss anything? 
uh, you know, a lot of stock stuff, there, there isn't a whole ton of bloat here. So that's a good thing. I mean, the real bloat you're looking at is right there. The, the Video Unlimited, uh, the Play Memories, if you don't want to use any of their camera-based software. Um, those are the things that are really the Walkman, Sony Select, uh, Office Suite I don't think anyone's going to get upset with. I mean, the balance of this is pretty much on point. The remote control, just great. Uh, I said I'm not going to cover it, but pretty simple. You can set up macros. You can set up uh, any device under the sun as long as it works uh, with infrared. So you do need that line of sight. This is not an RF-based device. Not sure if Sony will ever evolve this into working with RF. I hope that they do because, after all, any premium universal remote works with RF, but this is an ancillary feature. Uh, I'll show a demo uh, of that operational uh, guide, whatever you want to call it, uh, for you guys later. Uh, but we've seen some web browsing. You guys have seen some of the onboard features, and video playback, audio playback. Uh, again, I think uh, both are very, very good. Definitely top of the class right now, and they should be. Again, really expensive tablet, so it's got to perform. Uh, I mentioned a lot of good things. I want to tell you guys some of the things I'm not in love with. Um, even though I love the fact that this is a lightweight tablet, which is great, uh, it does do that at an expense, and that expense is a solid feeling. While the tablet feels solid in the hand, I can feel a little bit of flex on the back end, and I am being critical, but I'm letting those of you out there know that are critical, that that's going to be there. You know, this doesn't have a metal back like the last generation, and nor does it have the weight of the last generation, and it's got a bigger screen. So it's got that going for it. I definitely think that's a really good trade, but the design from last gen is gone. And I don't just mean uh, the magazine, you know, fold the cover. Uh, I'm talking about the actual uh, solid overall, uh, even the glass on the front end, uh, it just doesn't feel as solid as the last generation. And I think that has a lot to do with the overall design. I think it's in part mental really more than it even is physical. And I'm not saying that uh, because I think you're going to interpret it differently, but there's no question when you pick up a 10.1 inch tablet that weighs just about one pound, it's another class. And that in itself, before you even get using it and uh, operating the way you would on a day-to-day -day basis with any other tablet that you've used in the past is already gonna make you feel like you're using a product from another generation. Uh, side note, but an important one. So app drawer, as I said, pretty simple. Uh, let's go into settings for a moment want to show you guys uh, this is what you're gonna see stock pretty much uh, you know you can go with auto brightness of course uh, for the purpose of the demo I am not using auto brightness that'll improve your battery life uh, your lock for screen rotation uh, Wi-Fi performance has been really solid so far but I'll give you guys you know the final impressions when I really can uh, as you can see your menu here everything standard fare the about tablet I'm gonna show you guys I mentioned 4.1.2 right there and uh, updates again this is not a nexus so don't expect it to be treated as such uh, sony is in the business of making you know new tablets more money uh, like everyone else so they're not going to try to keep this product alive for five years uh, not that any manufacturer is not, you know most nexus devices um, aren't uh, necessarily supported that long so don't take that number as any standard it's not but uh, the point is the point uh, this thing is definitely very solid out of the box, and that's what you can really expect from the maturation over the years, uh, hopefully from all manufacturers, but at least Sony's uh, pulled it off here in the month, uh, past month of May, because uh, we are coming into June now. So, uh, really like this so far. Other things I want to show you guys here, um, you know, sound, they've got some enhancements that you can use, much like with the display. They've got the uh, Bravia Engine 2 that I mentioned. Haven't really... Uh, use the tablet that much with that off yet. That's why this is an update rather than a full review. Uh, power management, they have some enhancements that did not exist on the previous uh, version of this tablet. So some enhancements there, no question about it. I haven't really run into a lot of bugs, which is a very good thing. Uh, you also have the same dock that we had down at uh, the bottom of the last generation, which essentially gives you uh, quick access to a, a windowed browser, calculator, a clip manager, notes, voice recorder, your remote, and a timer. So if you want to use this in a kitchen, again, they are making this a kitchen-friendly tablet. After all, it has that water resistance. Now keep in mind, for the water resistance to work, everything's got to be closed up. And what they did learn from the older Xperia Tablet S was that if a user left 
the uh, charging port open, well, it was no longer waterproof. And despite however many uh, warnings Sony gave, it did not mean that people were going to listen. So now all of your ports are actually uh, have hinges that, you know, if you leave them open, you will have to close them. But at least that means you're not going to lose uh, that port cover that I just showed you for the Xperia Tablet S. So they learned something from that. They realized they had to actually cover everything, keep those actually hinged on, uh, which does kind of force you to close them after you're done with them, uh, unless you're incredibly lazy because otherwise they'll end up getting broken off. And I don't think anybody wants that to happen. Then you lose your water resistance. So I've given you guys quite a wealth of info on this tablet. Uh, I've discussed benchmarks. I've discussed uh, audio video performance. Web browsing is solid. I haven't done a lot of video conferencing yet, so I don't want to give you uh, you know any feedback really there although I don't anticipate any problems because again this is latest and greatest and so far it's been able to pretty much uh, chew up anything I throw at it and you know spit it out it hasn't had a problem I uh, haven't been able to test video out as I mentioned before that's something I'll reserve for later uh, volume levels really a lot better I'm not even going to attribute that to the 3d sound the tablet is just uh, I would say about twice as loud as the Xperia Tablet S, which for a tablet is more important than probably anything because, quite frankly, uh, audio fidelity is no tablet specialty when it comes to its external speakers. Uh, onboard digital signal processing, another story I'm not getting into right now. Cameras, I mentioned quality seems very good, definitely an improvement from the last gen, not just on paper, but actually in performance, especially uh, with that influence from the CyberShot division. And uh, furthermore, like even the extra software that I mentioned, the extra bloatware, again, I'm not getting into the Video Unlimited or Music Unlimited or the social life, uh, but Skype, Crackle, Netflix, I mean, you really can't get too upset about that. Uh, I like that they've kept uh, things where they should be on a tablet. Notifications down in the lower right corner, you know, you don't have to go all over the screen. That was one thing I was not in love with uh, the Nexus. Um, it's just, you know, it's not for everyone, frankly. I do prefer getting my software directly from Google, but some things, like I just pointed out to you guys, like the notifications in the lower right corner, that's a no-brainer. I don't want to have to be going up to the top of the screen every time I get a new piece of information. Uh, my hands are generally down here. That's also, by the way, part of, at least I think, what Sony came up with uh, the new 3D uh, sound design was also, you know, if your hands are blocking the speakers on the side, at least you've got speakers at the bottom. Another thing I'll save for down the road because I'm not positive. That's more of just my personal reflection of use thus far and just common sense on uh, a problem that I think all tablet manufacturers have faced because at one point or another, your hands are going to either hit buttons or cover speakers. Another good thing, by the way, as I mentioned that, uh, the buttons really are uh, very tactile, so I have not had any problems even when my hand is on the left side of the tablet. Don't find myself ever uh, turning the screen on or off or adjusting volume accidentally. So they made sure you really have to press them, not that you need to you know, put a lot of power behind it, but accidental presses are minimized to a great extent. Uh, I also want to show you guys just again in terms of build quality keep in mind really how thin this tablet really is I mean it is bonkers uh, I if I put this up right now next to the other tablet the old version you will see uh, the infrared port right there at the top which makes this wafer a infrared remote universal remote control which normally you'd have to pay Logitech for granted not the best form factor for uh, you know browsing what's on from your couch uh, you know, when compared to a traditional remote, but still uh, a performer. I can tell you that uh, the older Xperia Tablet S, I came back not too long ago from a trip. Some of you saw some of my clips uh, from the south of those Gators, and my Logitech remote was dead. Uh, and if I didn't have the Xperia Tablet S programmed for some basic devices, I would have had a problem because I don't know where those original remotes are. They went away a long, long time ago. So that's a pretty big feature for me, at least, uh, not because I use this as my, uh, this tablet or the Xperia Tablet S as my uh, remote first and foremost, as I keep saying that is a secondary feature, but still a great one to have. Uh, the only other tablet out there, obviously, that uses it in a respectable form uh, is the Samsung uh, Note 10.1, which of course I've covered in the past. This back finish, like I told you guys, uh, I like the way it feels. It doesn't collect a lot of fingerprints, which is a really good thing. The only downside is that, you know, there is a bit of flex and you can occasionally feel 
Uh, some things I'd rather not be feeling, but that's I'm being extraordinarily critical. Down there at the bottom, we've got the uh, NFC spot, essentially, to do any NFC transfer. Again, that's near-field communication that will allow you to transfer data, uh, video, music, text, whatever it may be that you want to transfer, uh, just by touching this uh, part of the tablet to uh, whatever device all, that also has NFC's basic uh, hotspot for touching it and transferring data. Sony does market this with their NFC and Bluetooth driven uh, wireless speaker so that you can wirelessly just, you know, uh, I shouldn't say wirelessly, but tap on and physically uh, begin playing whatever you want to. Of course, there are a whole host of different features uh, for near field, but that's something Sony's been marketing hard. Uh, and even though I say they've been marketing it hard, we haven't really seen anything about this tablet, which is still very curious because it is just uh, bar none right now when it comes to bleeding edge on everything. I mean, even the waterproofing, just crazy stuff, guys. I mean, uh, that's something that really gives me a bit of confidence because now I feel like, you know, you could take this to places that otherwise tablets, you don't even think about bringing them unless you like replacing them very frequently. So uh, for those of you who've been looking for that tablet for the, that can be in the kitchen, the beach, pretty much anywhere that you possibly need it, uh, and also shines in the performance uh, you know, basically all around the board here because it's got everything you could possibly want right now. Uh, I think the Xperia Tablet Z has just about everything going for it. I think it now finally does embody uh, the transition to the Xperia line because after all, the first Sony tablet was not an Xperia branded product. Uh, I didn't even get into PlayStation certification today, but I eventually will. Again, I want to stress, do keep in mind, usable storage on the 32. I mentioned this already, but I'm mentioning it a second time. It's worth repeating. 25 gigs on the 16, you're looking at it roughly nine. So keep that in mind before you pick one of these up. Really like it, and I uh, look forward to giving you guys more impressions. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.